Hello and welcome to the part two of understanding the impacts that vitamin D can make on various parts of our body. We've discussed the impact of vitamin D in part one. As far as our eyes are concerned, as far as the thyroid function is concerned, your teeth, your skeletal systems, your sinuses, your skin and the immune system in general. So here on we are going to discuss the impact of vitamin D starting with your lungs. Now let's understand that critical cases like your asthma can actually be treated and prevented by the presence of vitamin D into your body. Especially kids who are suffering from asthma, when they go out and play with direct exposure of sunlight, it opens up the lungs and it helps in curing asthma to a certain extent. Now we would also want to know that a lot of other lung disorders like your issues with respect to pneumonia or it can be bronchitis or it can be various other diseases or allergies or even lung cancer can be prevented by the presence of vitamin D into your body. Let's look at muscles now. What is it that muscles do? We know that muscles, especially post-exercising, we may have a situation when our muscles get cramping. So calcium is what makes sure the contraction happens and it is the magnesium that makes sure that the relaxation happens in your muscles. It's your vitamin D that is responsible for making a balance between this contraction and relaxation into your body. That's because vitamin D is responsible for absorption of calcium. Vitamin D is what enables the entry of calcium into your cells. And calcium is the king mineral. So unless calcium enters, other minerals will find it difficult to enter. And hence vitamin D is important for making sure that there is calcium absorption and vitamin D also has a significant impact on magnesium levels. And and hence contraction and relaxation of your muscles has a lot to do with the presence of vitamin D into your body. Now let's understand what is the impact that vitamin D makes as far as adrenal gland is concerned. Now when it comes to adrenal gland, we know that it releases cortisol. We often in common parlance, we associate a cortisol in a very negative term and we think that cortisol is what causes damage to us. But let's understand that cortisol is also required into our body to make sure that the inflammation reduces. So cortisol does something very similar to vitamin D. Both of them are anti-inflammatory and both of these cortisol and vitamin D are responsible for strengthening our immune system. So if the cortisol is there to take care of your inflammation, but if we have an excess of cortisol into our body because of higher levels of stress that we may go through, this excess cortisol will actually deplete the vitamin D from our body. And hence, we know that excess of everything is bad. That's the interlinkage between vitamin D and adrenal gland. Let's look at the impact of vitamin D as far as your pancreas is concerned. That we know that the pancreas is responsible for the release of insulin. Now, there is this beta cells which are present in the pancreas that are responsible to make insulin. Now, they require vitamin D to be able to make insulin. So what happens is that you know, a lot of type 1 diabetes for kids or autoimmune disorders, etc. may be a direct correlation to the deficiency of vitamin D. It could be in the mother when the mother is pregnant and thus having a child with type 1 diabetes or it could be uh, the lactating mother who's feeding the child and the child is deficient in vitamin D or it could even be any other individual who is deficient in vitamin D. Let's look at the impact of vitamin D as far as our heart is concerned. A very significant organ, small fist size, 250 grams of an organ but that plays a very significant role as far as our circulatory system is concerned. So when it comes to the heart, a low vitamin D, that means a deficiency of vitamin Vitamin D can actually lead to CAD, which is coronary heart diseases. Now, the arteries may have certain inflammations and these inflammations are controlled to a large extent by the presence of vitamin D into our body. But there may be cases of high blood pressure which is again controlled by vitamin D because vitamin D is anti-inflammatory and hence it also to an extent prevents you from 
a lot of stroke conditions now let's look at liver now liver is the organ that stores vitamin d3 for us when you are exposed to the sunlight and the sunlight is you know entering your skin pores it enters into your system and goes and gets stored into your liver now when it gets stored into the liver let's understand that a low vitamin d leads to a high insulin resistance so a low vitamin d will lead to a high blood sugar this high blood sugar will lead to a fatty liver thus it is an inflammation and hence to combat this inflammation we again need vitamin d but the whole cause may itself be the deficiency of vitamin d let's look at the significance as far as kidney is concerned now liver and kidney very much are interlinked so if there is an issue with the kidney there is an issue with liver sooner or later or if there is an issue with the liver which is untreated for a prolonged period of time it does get into an issue related to the kidney sooner or later and hence it's important to get treatment as soon as possible so if there are kidney stones it means there is kidney damage now vitamin d3 is actually uh, getting stored in the liver but it gets activated into your kidney so if the kidneys are damaged they will not be able to make the stored vitamin d3 in your liver they will not be able to convert it into an active form so as to enable our body to use it and hence it is practically useless being stored into our body therefore if the kidney is damaged vitamin d cannot be active and hence it may lead to us you know a number of inflammatory conditions autoimmune diseases and a number of issues that we do not want in our body vitamin d has a significant role and a direct connection with your gut let's understand that while your liver is what is storing your vitamin d it is your kidney that is converting it into an active form it is your gut where it is getting absorbed so if you want the absorption of vitamin d it happens in your gut so people who are suffering from crohn's people who are suffering from celiac people who are suffering from ibs people who are suffering from any gastric or gut related disorders should focus on their vitamin d because if the gut is not in a good condition vitamin d absorption should be very very difficult and hence first cleanse and clean and treat your gut and enable your vitamin d to do good things to your body if you do not treat your gut for a prolonged period of time what happens is that it may lead to leaky gut or our intestines have a brush border wall wherein all the nutrients are absorbed from from the intestines into the blood stream now this absorption happens through your brush border wall but if your gut is not treated for a very long time and you continue to get chronic gut issues what will happen is that you will see small tears into this brush border wall and these tears is what the condition of leaky gut is called there are a variety of other issues that the deficiency of vitamin d can cause to us this could be issues with respect to testicles in men it could be issues with respect to ovaries in women it could be prostate enlargement related issues it could be joint stiffness or joint pain related issues uh, it could be arthritis or rheumatoid arthritis or it could be osteo malaria it could be osteoporosis it can be osteopenia which is a precondition for osteoporosis now let's understand that while we know that vitamin d can be checked by a laboratory there are serum based tests that can inform to us whether we are deficient in vitamin d or not there are also certain home tests that we can ourselves do to figure out if we are deficient in vitamin d and one simple test is to press on your breast bone so the breast bone or your sheen if pressed hardly try and observe if you get pain so if there is pain you know that there is something that you need to focus on vitamin d because the pain in your skeletal systems or your pain in your bones has a direct connection with your vitamin d condition also if there is a lower back pain for prolonged periods of time it could be a condition of deficiency of vitamin d and hence you would want to consider this we also discussed about skeletal issues like your scoliosis and lordosis and 
kyphosis that are spine related problems which may be directly attributed to the deficiency of vitamin D. I hope this is very helpful and have liked this uh, part 1 and part 2 series of vitamin D. Please like, share and subscribe. I hope this was useful. See you again.